Hello my friends, Buck Weezer, Buck Small Engine, DIY on YouTube. Uh, I've got a, a lawnmower that starts on the first pull and runs great, but it won't shut off. When you release the safety handle, the, the bail, to shut it off, it just keeps running. I've never experienced this before. I can hear the brake pressing against the flywheel, but apparently the ignition coil is not grounding out and just continues to run. So we're going to have to investigate to see what's going on. I hope this video will be of help to you. I'm expecting to learn and have fun fixing it. So let's get going. All right. I've got a 10 millimeter socket to carefully take off our recoil bolt bolts. I guess you would call them nuts. I just got a set of quarter inch drive metric deep sockets. 10 bucks at Tractor Supply. And I think for, you know, the kind of work I do on lawnmowers, that's going to be good enough. I don't, I don't feel the need to buy super expensive stuff. So, it's these three, uh, these three nuts that hold down the both the recoil starter and the shroud. So we'll move them out of the way and the recoil comes off, move him out of the way and we gently lift the shroud and there's that. Now we got access to what we need to say. All right, so let's talk briefly about what happens to shut down an engine. So, you know, as you know, to run the motor, you've run the mower, you've got to squeeze this. And when you release it, two things happen that shut the motor down. Uh, first of all, this, this uh, brake goes against the flywheel to slow it down from spinning. And also, the second thing, through we make ground connection to our magneto to stop it from producing spark. So uh, those two things happen. When I squeeze the trigger, you can see that brake move away from the flywheel. You see it? And continuity up from, of ground to the, uh, to the magneto is also broken, allowing the engine to start and the magneto to generate spark and fire. And when I release the bale, the brake goes against the flywheel and ground is applied to the magneto stopping it from firing. Those are the two things that happen. So, but for whatever reason, the, when I released the bale to stop the engine, the brake did go against the flywheel, but the coil did not ground out. So that is what we need to investigate and figure out why. All right, we're gonna start it up. I've got the shroud off, but I put the recoil starter back on. And we're going to see what happens. And we'll start it up and see what we get. Uh, all right. So I grounded it. it you, you saw me disengage the safety brake and it still kept running. So with this jumper wire, I went from the engine block directly to this and it grounded out. So it confirms that for whatever reason, we're not getting sufficient uh, continuity to ground when we disengage the safety, safety bar. And I'm not sure why because we've proved that it will it will quit once we ground it out. But it's not grounding out itself when we release the handle. So, All right, so we're back up here on the table. Now we confirmed in that last test that <coughs> the engine will shut down when we 
when we have continuity to ground here, you know, we used we used our we used our clips here, and uh, and we shut the uh, we shut the uh, <coughs> motor down just fine. So I was just poking around online. I realized what what is supposed to happen is when we release the bale, and that pad comes in contact with the flywheel, we're supposed to get continuity through the pad, through these two posts, through this piece of metal uh, strapping, through this wire, to our ignition coil kill ground tab. All right. So the question I have is, are we getting continuity? And, and it just doesn't seem to be working. <clears throat> so I want to ask myself, is there Let's open that, let's squeeze the bale again. And let's just test, pull the wire off there, use our, our continuity tester. Do we have continuity from here, from the pad, the brake pad, to the, the kill wire, through the kill, up to the kill wire? All right, and we do. Okay, you can hear it beeping. So <clears throat> this should be, killing our engine when the brake pad grounds itself against the flywheel. Well, for whatever reason, that's not happening. It, and we're not getting continuity that's strong enough to actually stop the, the coil from generating spark. So what if we start it up again, and I'll just take a, you know, maybe a screwdriver and press a little harder against this as it's running, as we, as we attempt to stop it, just put a, a little extra pressure against that brake pad, pushing it into the flywheel, <coughs> and see if that will shut it off. I also took some sandpaper and cleaned the flywheel so we get better continuity. It was very rusty, as you recall. It's not so rusty now. I've sanded it down. And uh, I don't know. But the continuity is coming from the flywheel, through the brake pad, through the strap, through the wire, to the ignition coil. And that's supposed to be how it grounds out the coil. But maybe if we push that with a little more force against the flywheel. We tested that it's got continuity. See if that can shut it down. So let's put this on the floor and try it one more time. All right, so once again, we're going to start it up, and then I'm going to release the bale as if to stop the engine. If it continues to run, I'm going to apply a little pressure with a screwdriver to the backside of that brake pad and see if pushing it tighter against the flywheel will get it to stop. All right, here we go. So by applying additional pressure to that brake pad, we get the continuity necessary to shut down the engine. <clears throat> but why is it, it's kind of a cheesy system if you ask me, but what can we do? You can't replace this pad. You can buy this whole assembly. I don't want to do that, it's 25 bucks plus shipping. And maybe the same thing would happen. Is there a way we can get this pad tighter up against this flywheel? Because if we can do that, it's solved. Okay, so we're back on a workbench and I got two ideas. First, I will say though, it is nice, isn't it? How this thing starts so easily. One pull start, sounds great, no longer smoking. We did a nice job getting this back into service, and uh, if you haven't seen a video, it's kind of a long one, but we did a, I feel really happy with the work we did to get it back in running condition. <laughs> now we got to get it into stopping condition. Okay, ideas. Could I make some kind of spacer 
to put back here that would obligate that, that pad to be more firmly pressed against the flywheel. Number two, could we take off this assembly and try bending the bracket onto which this pad is mounted? Would that work also? I think that might be my first try because I think that might be easier than actually trying to uh, come up with a spacer. I don't know. Some One of those two things we're going to try, so hang on. So take off this assembly. We're just going to unplug the wire from the magneto, and we got one, two 10 millimeter bolts. And there's one break, broke that guy loose, two, and these will come off, and that's it, just the two bolts. And then we'll have access to either put in a spacer back here, or maybe just try to bend it so it's a little tighter up against the uh, one bolt. Just so bend it so it's a little tighter up against the flywheel. Drop that bolt. Let's <coughs> grab them with the magnet. There we go. All right, so here's here's our assembly. The brake is on this bracket, and this is the bracket that pivots. It's interesting what kind of material this is. I don't really know that, but it's conductive. All right, do I need to put this in the in the uh, bench vise to bend it? Maybe so. All right, so just to quick show you what I did. I used a coffee can lid. I made three spacers based on the one that was already there. And uh, used just a paper hole punch to cut out a pair of scissors. And I'm going to stack those up and see if that helps. And maybe that'll uh, give us more pressure against that flywheel. I will probably also try to just slightly bend that bracket. We're going to give it a try. All right, so let's try to stack these uh, spacers on there. The crazy stuff we do. Didn't punch that one quite right. Let me try again. This might fit better now. All right. So now it goes up here in the bracket. And this spacer is on this side. I did slightly bend this bracket also, by the way, uh, with a pair of pliers. So hopefully, the combination of a few extra, extra spacers, as well as slightly bending the bracket, will do the trick. And getting enough pressure against that flywheel to ground out the ignition coil. And you know what? If it doesn't work, I'm going to come up with some kind of uh, uh, some kind of system to just ground out the flywheel myself. All right, so I'm going to tighten these. We're going to put the bracket back on, and we're going to try again. All right? And I will see you at that moment. All right, took me a few tries, but I finally got the, uh, I got this put on correctly and back together. And you can see when I release the safety bale, it goes up against the flywheel. 
when I squeeze the bale, it comes off the flywheel, so I think we're good. It just doesn't look to me like it really contacts the flywheel that tightly. But we're going to give it a try. If this doesn't work, we'll have to come up with an alternative plan. All right, so uh, let's fire it up and see if it will contribute to running for us and stop it. about that it did what it was supposed to let's try it again all right <laughs> that's fabulous that feels great doesn't it we came up with a no-cost repair and we really just did two things putting those extra spacers in and bending the brackets slightly so that it pushes a little harder up against the flywheel to ground out the ignition. And we're not only running great, we're stopping great. You can't beat it. Guess I put the shroud back on and call this one done. <laughs> All right, well that was a learning experience for me and I hope it was for you too. You got one of these Kohler lawnmower engines that doesn't want to turn off for you. Hopefully you know how to go about it. We were able to fix it without spending a dime, which is, is uh, especially enjoyable and satisfying. And uh, yeah, so we got a, a mower that runs well and now stops well, both of which are very important. Thanks for watching today. I always invite your comments and questions in the discussion uh, below, so please feel free to comment. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And remember, as I always like to say, only you can put the do into do-it-yourself. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.